what I'd like to do here is take a look quickly at migrating from Windows XP to Windows 7. As you know, there is no direct path upgrade, so we have to migrate. Basically, we take off documents and settings from uh, Windows XP, save them, install Windows 7, reinstall it. You have to reinstall all your software once you've done the migration, but all your configurations, all your registry configurations, and all your documents that were in documents and settings will be available uh, once the migration is done. So in order to get there, for the preparation, the first thing we need is an external storage, someplace to store this information after we run, and we'll talk about it in a second, Windows Easy Transfer in order to create a single file. If you don't have Windows Easy Transfer and don't want to get it, then you can copy the files individually, but then you'll only have the files. You'll need the installation disks for all of your software because you will have to reinstall, reinstall your software. And then you'll need the Windows 7 installation files. Before you do anything else, download the Upgrade Advisor, and if Windows Easy Transfer wet isn't installed, uh, download it. It is available on the network, but I think that you'll find it probably is already going to be on your XP machine. The next thing we want to do is to check to will the programs work and which drivers need to be upgraded. That's what the uh, Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor will do for you. You'll have to again, you'll have to download and install it. Then we want to move files. Install if necessary. Install the Windows Easy transfer, run it on your old machine and save the file, the single file that it creates to some other storage, I say to off machine storage, it could be to a, a USB drive, could be to a network share, could be to a hard drive, a separate hard drive that's actually on the uh, machine. What you don't want to do is put it on the uh, C partition because we're going to basically wipe everything out on it and, uh, and move from Windows XP to Windows 7. The next thing you need to do is install Windows 7. Uh, once you go through the process, if you get an issue that the uh, NTFS uh, system is too old, if you have that error, then you can just go back and convert the uh, NTFS to the latest version using the convert command and the help screen that goes along with that. Then once we have Windows 7 installed, we need to move the files back that we saved using the Windows Easy Transfer, using Windows Easy Transfer on our new machine. So and then after that, we'll reinstall the programs and update any drivers that are required. Uh, post install items. When you get done, there will be a new folder on your machine called Windows.old. That's just in case we forgot to get something. We can dig through it and actually recover files from it. Once you're sure and their recommendations after you run it for, for a week or so, and my recommendation would be after you run it for two or three weeks or so, uh, you can delete that file. And what you want to do is use uh, the disk cleanup function in order to do that. So once it's installed, once we're running fine, then we can delete that particular folder. First thing we'll need to do is get an XP machine. I've set up some users on this one so you can see when we actually do the transfers that there is information that we can transfer from one to the other. The uh, administrative user on this machine is this Skyline user here, so we will go ahead and try to log in as him. As him. So I am on the XP machine. I went ahead and downloaded uh, and to put in a util folder the Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor, the setup program. Uh, you will need to get that before you start to find out what does and what doesn't work. I just wanted to go through that. Uh, briefly here, we need the .NET before it's continuing. It's a 22 meg download. Would you like to let us download and install it? The answer is yes, because if we don't do that, then it's not going to work. So you're going to need that 
program. Uh, while it's downloading and installing, I'm going to hit and pause the recording. Okay, we've gone through the next, next, watch Windows. Make changes, 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 and now we're into the finish. We finished with that, preparing to install, accept, and this is for the upgrade advisor. Accept the conditions, read the uh, read the conditions. I don't know if if you don't agree, you're not going to be able to do it, obviously. So we're going to launch the upgrade advisor, start the check. And it's going to go through, so take a few minutes. And again, while it is running, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and, and stop the recording until it gets done so we can see what the report looks like after after it's done checking the system. Okay, it's done now. Uh, it says here that it had a problem checking the system for compatibility, probably because I'm running on a virtual machine. For the devices, no issues, and the programs are all listed as compatible. And the programs here are Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor, Adobe Flash, uh, FT Downloader, and the, and the uh, .NET. So what it's saying is that I should be able to progress. The next step after we've done that is to uh, run the Windows Easy Transfer. There are two programs that you can use here. One of them is the uh, Windows Easy Transfer. The other, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the uh, turn on the uh, administrative tools so that I have them. Anyhow, back to the two programs are the User State Migration Tool, if you have a lot of them, probably in a domain environment, or the Windows Easy Transfer. Windows Easy Transfer, because it is easier, uh, we should be able to, I turned on them and I didn't really need them. In, in Accessories, System Tools, not there. Since this one didn't have uh, Windows Easy Transfer, I had to go back and do what we talked about earlier, which is to download it. I did, did do the download, didn't want you to suffer through that, and it actually took quite a bit of time. I've also created a separate storage from my operating system, so I'm going to go in here into my Utilities folder and Self-Extracting Cabinet, Windows Easy Transfer. Uh, and Microsoft has done me a favor here and sent me something that doesn't work, so let me try again. After four more tries, I finally got one that I think is going to work. Let's see here. We'll run it. It's extracting. That's a good sign. Uh, I just want you to see the start of this. Agree. This one actually shouldn't take that long. Inspecting the current configuration. Uh, Okay, I'll go ahead and pause while it does its installation. Okay, it says that it is finished, and when we go here, Programs, the Windows Easy Transfer for Windows 7, I can transfer user accounts, documents, music, pictures, email, internet, favorites, videos, and more. So let's see if we can get through this thing. Next, and what we're going to do is I'm going to use it on an, I'm going to say it's on an external hard disk or flash drive. What it really is is a, is a disk that is attached to this machine. This is my old computer, and I want to transfer the settings from this computer. Now it's going to scan, and these are the users. It's scanning each of these users and figuring out what is is can be transferred what is available to be transferred. And while it's doing the scanning, I'm going to again pause the video. Okay, the scanning is completed. Uh, estimating 0% customize. If we go into the customize, we can pick what we actually want to transfer. You don't have to transfer everything. It tells you how much space is needed for each of those items. Next, and we'll put a password on it, just in case somebody gets it didn't look like the same size, huh? And it will obviously tell me where do we want to save it to. And then this one I'm going to go to E, 
And let's just save it. We'll easy transfer file, save as easy transfer items from my old computer. So, just in case, actually it's saving them now. You can see it's saving. Uh, while it is saving, uh, I'll pause it because this take it's going to take a couple of minutes also. Okay, once again it's done and it's say 438.9 meg. So that took a couple minutes to do that. We're ready to go next. It says your transfer file is complete on the Windows Easy Transfer on your new computer once we get there. Here's where it's saved on the E drive. Can close that. And now we can go to the E drive and we have a Windows Easy Transfer items from my old computer. While that was going on, I went ahead and inserted into the DVD, or I will insert into the DVD, the uh, Windows uh, uh, 7 installation disk. Let me pause this while I do that. Okay, I actually did get it in this time, as you can see, because Windows 7 is ready to go. A couple of things we can do here, check compatibility online. We could go back and do the compatibility here, what you need to know before installing Windows. We can do that. I'm just going to go into the install now and copy the temporary files. Again, here we're going to uh, allow it to do its own thing. Uh, set up starting. This is basically copy files next next until you get done as it has things and here's the first thing go online get the latest updates I want to try to uh, make this a little quicker I'm not going to do that we're going to accept the terms here upgrade remember we can only upgrade from Windows Vista so what we're going to have to do is a new one and we're going to install it on the C drive the C partition which is the one that had the uh, Windows XP on it. Partition you selected contains files from previous versions. Uh, what it basically says is they're not going to be there, but you will be able to access the information in the Windows.old folder, and we'll look at that when we get done. It, it saves what was there. It also is a very big file that once you're sure that you've got everything that you need, you can go ahead and delete that file. So we'll say, okay, this is where it's just going to go. Copying Windows files, you may have seen this before. Expand and installing features, installing updates, completing the installation. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video until it gets to the point that it actually asks us a question. Okay, we're back. And just to let you know that, yeah, this is the first thing that it's asked me to do. I went to lunch while I was doing the rest of this stuff, so it has been automatic up to this point. So country or region, United States, time US, keyboard layout US, and uh, we can uh, go next. We hope next. Now we're going to type a user name. This user will be the first user in Windows 7 and will be your administrative user. Unlike prior versions of Windows, the administrative user runs without administrative rights and when he needs to do he or she needs to do something of an administrative function, then we elevate using the user account control, the UAC, the pop ups saying, Did you really do this? And you can say yes. So we'll call this one yeah, let's just call it demo one. Don't want it to be the same uh name as other things might be. So we have a user named demo1, type of password. This is the way that they get you to actually put the password in. And uh, you need a password hint here. Not a good idea to make it the password, but some hint that if, in case you forget that password, you can uh, get into the system. Recommended settings, important updates, or ask me later in the updates. Probably just as good to use the recommended settings, which says that we're going to allow Windows to make the updates for us. 
uh, time zone. I'm in the Eastern time zone, so I'm going to go down here and I want to find minus 5 Eastern U.S. and Canada, not Indiana. Uh, so we have our time zone. And what kind of a network? Home, work, or public? Not a lot of difference between a home network and a work network. The uh, public network configures the firewall with some protections. If you're on an actual true public network, hotel, McDonald's, Starbucks, those sorts of things, you really want to say you're on a public network. In this case, I'm going to call it a work network and then let Windows finalize the settings. Again, while it's doing this, I think I want to pause it because you don't want to watch it just run the little bar back and forth. And when it actually does something again, I'll come back. Okay, Windows has done its thing. It's rebooting, created the uh, desktop profiles and all that. And we're logged on as the user that we created, Demo1. If we go to Control Panel and go to our uh, administrative tools and look in the uh, computer management, we're going to find that we just have the user that we made. So if we go into our users, we have the user demo one. Administrator is disabled at demo one. Uh, should be a member of the administrator's group, but he doesn't run with administrative authority. So we made that uh, transfer file. You might have wondered what happened there. I'm using a virtual machine and I just lost my connection uh, to it. Uh, it's running remotely, obviously. But anyhow, we did that. Let's see if our E drive is still there. And it is in our Windows Easy Transfer. Windows 7 should have Windows Easy Transfer on it already. So if we go to Programs, Accessories, System Tools, Windows Easy Transfer is here. And we'll start it. And then we should be able to, we can do the transfer next, and then we have the, we're going to use an external hard drive. This is my old computer. This is, my, this is going to be my new computer, obviously. Has already saved your files from your old computer to an external hard drive? Yes, we have. And now, the moment of great anxiety will it do that's going to ask me for the password which I hope I remember and it it's open in the selected transfer file when it does that we should again have the option of what we're going to transfer while it's doing that I'm going to once again pause the video uh, because you don't really want to just watch this thing run back and forth well, before I pause the video, customize, what are we going to do? We have the check boxes over here. We can select what we want to uh, transfer into the new system. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to transfer. Uh, it's doing the preparing and all the other getting ready to do that. It's going to take a few minutes because it's got the uh, almost half a gig to uh, transfer. So I am going to pause it now while it does this uh, copy from the one disk to the other. Okay, Easy Transfer has now completed, just completed uh, copying the files. We can see what was transferred by clicking on this. I'm going to get the report here. As soon as it does that transfer report, the program report, the transfer report, five users, the details, administrator, transfer to administrator, Jones to Jones, James to James, MCC to MCC. So we have transfer those things, the documents that were transferred, see colon documents and settings. One of the things that does change in uh, Windows 7 is our see colon documents and settings 
doesn't exist anymore, but everything now goes into the users folder. So we have the, those things in the users folder. And you notice over here that we had the nothing on the uh, desktop, and now we have the information on the desktop that got transferred with the Windows Easy Transfer. The other thing that we talked about is the, uh, let me look at this real quick, Windows O, and then we'll do the restart, is the Windows O folder, and it has the documents and settings. This one didn't have a whole lot on it, but we have all of that information still in this folder. Again, including the Windows folder. We have the Windows, which is our current one. If we look at the properties of it, it's going to be counting up, but you can see from the start it's going to be a fairly large uh, folder here. So this is the one that after you're convinced that you actually really do have everything that you need from the C drive, you can go ahead and delete that one. I'm going to, again, pause this and let it do the reboot, and then we'll come back. Okay. Windows has now done its reboot, and we have the option of the uh, users that we transferred. Uh, Demo 1 is going to be the Skyline user. H. Jones, J. James, and MCC are all available. Let's go into Demo 1. I want to check out a couple of things and see if it brought some things over that should have been available uh, for this user. So when I go into my computer uh, documents in here, we have things that I did put in him. LibreOffice, Portable, and a Wireshark uh, installer are available there. So he did have Wireshark, don't really have a whole lot. So we have LibreOffice Portable that is available to this user that was there. The other thing, don't know if this is going to work because I haven't tried them yet, is favorites. I did have some favorites there, the college, Yahoo, just a couple of things that I'd put in just to see if they would come over, and, and they have come over the Skyline College website couple of other things and as you can see flash player is anxious to get started so because we have a, uh, a little flash application up here so it looks like everything actually got moved over uh, video here runs a little under 25 minutes the actual uh, upgrade itself probably took about two hours. Part of that was because of virtual machines. Part of that was because of the slow downloads on the virtual machine. But it is not anything that's going to be a uh, 15 or 20 minute exercise whenever you do it. You can transfer these things right now. We would, if we had had applications installed in the system, we would get our disks out and start. Uh, installing the applications and then all of our configurations would be there. I think that takes care of all of the things that we talked about in the uh, in the uh, initial PowerPoint here. The new folder we have the Windows O. We can delete that after we're sure and we can use the disk cleanup for that. Not going to do that right now. You can obviously go back and put your desktops in your backgrounds and that you would like. But uh, that takes care of the uh, migrating procedure to migrate from Windows XP to Windows 7 since there is no real upgrade path. There is no upgrade path, period. With that, I hope this has been useful and thank you for watching.